Good morning, dear students. I hope you are having a good time at home. Today we are going to start with the chapter second in your syllabus, that is classification of the living world. Before we start with this chapter, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Dr. Wasim Mushtaq, and I am your biology teacher. So let's start uh, straight away with our chapter, that is chapter second, classification of the living world. Okay. First, we should understand that uh, why do we need to classify the living organisms? This chapter is all about the classification of the living or living organisms, right? There are more than 30 million living organisms present on the surface of the earth, in the air, or, or under the water, on the water, okay? So how do we recognize them? How do we classify uh, this huge number, this huge variety of the species? All right, so for for this, uh, this uh, there's a system named, which is called as the classification of the living world. And in this chapter, in this lecture, we're going to talk about it. Uh, let me give you an analogy. Like uh, there are so many books in your library. How many books? There are thousands of books in our library, okay? And uh, they have been classified in, the, in our library, in our school libraries as uh, separate folders for the books related to the science, uh, mathematics, social science, general knowledge, current affairs, and so on, okay? Suppose there are no separate shelves for the particular uh, for the particular set of books, I mean, there are no sh separate shelves for science or maths and so on. Okay, and we and uh, we students are allowed to place any book anywhere. Okay, we can put maths book in science science shelf. We can put uh, put English book in mathematics section. Right, we can uh, we are uh, being allowed. All the students are being allowed to put any book anywhere. Now, the the problem will arise when you will be looking for a particular book. For example, I need uh, uh, the biology book of class sixth, okay? Now, if I will go to the section uh, biology, science science section, and therefore I, uh, there and I will look for the biology section, but I will not find your book there, why? Because it might have been placed in any other section, let's suppose in mathematics or in, uh, or in English literature, right? So it becomes very compulsory that we put uh, the particular books in separate sections and that too, and that two and uh, that two are arranged alphabetically, right? If I need a biology book, first I will go to the science section, okay? And therefrom, I will start with the alphabet B. I'll not start with the alphabet A, but I will start with the alphabet B. Then I will look for B I. Then I will look for B I O L, okay? And ultimately, when this uh, I will reach the section biology, and therefore, there and I can find the class sixth biology. Understand? Similarly. There are numerous, there are 30 million species uh, are present uh, on the earth, okay? So it becomes very necessary to classify them in separate sections. Like we, uh, like we have put books in the separate sections, we also need to put these living organisms in the separate sub sections so that whenever we meet, um, for whenever we are talking about any particular animal or a particular plant, we can straight away go to the library the separate library it has and find it there understand so there's a system which is called as the biological classification this system is called as the biological class but the biological biological classification biological classification is the identifying grouping and naming of living organisms identifying grouping and naming of living organisms means first we have to identify okay we identified a living organism then we group it we group it in uh, into its uh, perfect position okay and then we have to name it is identifying grouping and naming of living organisms is called as the biological classification all right advantages what are the advantages of the biological classification advantages I already told you it becomes it makes the scientific study simpler understand it makes the scientific study simpler means when we have to look for a particular animal or a particular plant we'll go straight away to its uh, to its uh, particular section and we'll find it there okay so it makes scientific study simpler and number second it does the generalization of the characters generalization of the characters means for example uh, i have put i will put uh, the bulbul uh, the parrot and the pigeon in this section aves that's the birds I'll put pigeon, parrot in the section birds. So, so means uh, this pigeon, parrot, and uh, pigeon and parrot or bulbul. They all have, they have most of the characters they have are same. Like they fly in the air, 
they have hollow bones okay they are light in weight okay so this they are they have uh, they have this these feathers to fly so it, it is the generalization of the characters means i do not have to remember the characters of the pigeon only okay i can remember character of any of the birds and those characters uh, are similar in all the in all the bird species right so it helps in the generalization of the characters number uh, it uh, what are the advantages it makes the scientific study simpler and number second it helps in the generalization of the characters and it also helps in the grouping and classifying of classification of the living organisms simpler okay now there are two systems of classification systems of classification there are two systems of classification one is the artificial system and other is the natural system artificial system in artificial system of classification only few superficial characters are concerned okay only few uh, superficial characters are concerned like for example aristotle was the first was the first person to uh, apply this artificial system of classification in the case of animals in the case of animals like he classified animals on the basis of like uh, uh, animals uh, here like uh, some uh, some the animals that lay eggs are called as oviparous and they were uh, grouped separately and the animals which gave birth to the young ones okay they are they were uh, grouped separately organisms animals that could fly uh, that had wings for example according to this system artificial system of classification insects and birds both have the ability to fly okay they were class they were classified together but they are uh, when uh, today uh, due to the advancement in microscopy and several other studies we know that birds and um, insects they are two separate taxa that is the uh, aves and the uh, insecta and then was next person theophrastus theophrastus was actually the pupil the student of the aristotle and he was the person who classified the plants he classified plants uh, plants into trees shrubs herbs and under shrubs on just on the basis of their size so theophrastus classified plants just on the basis of the size okay so this is known as the artificial system of classification aristotle classified aristotle did the artificial system of classification for animals and theophrastus did the artificial system of classification for the plants okay and in this artificial system of classification only superficial characters were considered as i explained separately now there is next system of classification that is called as natural system of classification okay it has two uh, two kinds that is two kingdom system two kingdom system of classification and the five kingdom system of classification two kingdom system of classification was given by carolus linnaeus in 1758 and five kingdom uh, system of classification was given by r h whitaker in the year 1969 okay what is natural system of classification in na the natural system of classification the uh, first is the two kingdom system two kingdom system of classification given by carolus linnaeus or it's also called as the modern system of classification okay what's the two kingdom system carolin carolus linnaeus in the year 1758 divided all the living organisms into two only two kingdoms kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia he classified all the plants separate and all the animals separate okay so the two kingdom system of classification was given by carolus linnaeus in the year 1758 and according to him there are only two kingdoms as kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia okay and this system of classification was was uh, on the basis of what on the basis of the ability to synthesize food means those organisms which could synthesize their own food were classified into kingdom plantae and those organisms which were not able to uh, synthesize their own food and were able to move those were called uh, put into kingdom animalia okay it is all this two kingdom system is has also its merits and demerits okay let's talk about the demerits uh, in the two kingdom system of classification he placed bacteria whether they were autotrophic okay he placed them uh, he placed them in the kingdom uh, plantae and the uh, and the fungi fungi are heterotrophic they cannot synthesize in their own food but they totally are separate from the uh, kingdom animalia however this two kingdom system put uh, fungi into kingdom animalia okay the now let's talk about advantage the biggest advantage of the two kingdom system of classification was the introduction of the taxonomic ranks introduction of the taxonomic ranks taxonomic ranks means uh, this uh, 
or as well this carolus linius carolus linius in his two kingdom system of classification classified all living organisms into plantae and animalia he then further subdivided them into separate divisions or separate taxa we call them as separate taxa these taxa are the different levels of organization okay like uh, here it is the carolus linius system of classification is taxonomic ranks first he put kingdom okay there are two kingdoms kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia okay then kingdom ha kingdom may have several phyla or we call them as uh, single is called as a phylum and the phylum has many classes okay and the class has several orders an order may have several families a family may have several genus and a genus may have several species all right and the most and the most common characters were present in the individuals that were in, uh, that were uh, uh, in the species means species are most related to each other and the most divergent are the two kingdoms like the kingdom plantae and the kingdom animalia they are most divergent okay they have least number of characters common but the species have the most characters common okay now let's talk about the five kingdom system of classification which was given by r h vitakar in the year 1969 r h vitakar divided all living organisms into five kingdoms those are kingdom monera kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom plantae kingdom animalia and kingdom animalia so he divided all living organisms into five kingdom monera protista fungi plantae and animalia okay let's talk about the kingdom monera kingdom monera in uh, it kingdom monera includes all the all the living organisms that are unicellular and they have they do not have a and they do not have a well defined nucleus they do not have a well defined nucleus kingdom protista okay kingdom monera in, includes cyanobacteria means kingdom monera it includes those uh, unicellular organisms some of them can synthesize their own food like blue green algae which are also known as cyanobacteria means the uh, blue green algae are not the algae they are the kingdom they belong to the kingdom monera okay and the kingdom protista next is the kingdom protista it includes all the diatoms the amoeba the paramecium some of them may be heterotrophic and some of some of them may be uh, the uh, photosynthetic okay now kingdom fungi kingdom fungi includes uh, they have the parasitic mode of nutrition they are heterotrophic okay okay then their cell wall fungi have a cell wall that is made of chitin okay and this kingdom monera they have a cell wall similar to the cell wall of the plants but fungi have a separate cell wall okay separate kind of cell wall because it is made up of chitin but the cell wall of the monera and the plantae is made up of the cellulose next is the kingdom uh, plantae and kingdom animalia there are two separate chapters for kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia in your syllabus and we shall study them uh, separately so thank you for watching me have a good time